Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. I decided I have to make a video on this Motel 6 controversy that's been going on the last couple of days. And if you hear some background noise, I am recording the audio while out driving around today getting some errands done. But the thing's just been on my nerves. The headlines and... Um, you know, it ends up, this video is going to end up defending Motel 6. I really don't have a reason to, motel, to defend Motel 6 per se. It's just that the journalism and the articles written about this entire thing are just so dishonest and misleading. And it's just lazy, hack, clickbait, clickbait journalism. It's, it's just awful. And for those of you who have been subscribed to me for a long time, you will already know that I spent nearly a decade working at the front desk of a hotel. It wasn't a Motel 6, but it was another franchise model hotel chain. So I basically know more or less what's going on here. And I've been in this similar situation a bunch of times. So I, to start off, the article, if you're unfamiliar with it, like the typical headline is Motel 6 gives ICE agents, quote, Latino sounding guest names. And if you actually read the article, which they know most people aren't going to read the whole article, they just want you to click on the link so the ads pop up and they get the ad revenue. That's my seatbelt dinger because my phone's in the passenger seat. That's how stupid my car is. It doesn't even realize that that is the cell phone. It weighs like 10 ounces. Stop dinging like there's a person there. Okay, so I just hate those titles because if you actually read the article, yes, the hotel gave out guest names, but they gave out the name of every guest in the hotel, not the Latino sounding names. And it was the ICE agents that singled out the Latino sounding names. So right away, I feel like this whole thing, if you were gonna hate this topic, if you were going to hate something in this scenario, it should be the ICE agents, not Motel 6. And even if you wanna hate Motel 6, it should be the individual hotels, not the chain itself. So here's the thing with the hotel chains, right? And I can speak from experience with Choice Hotels because that's where I worked. And I would imagine that Motel 6 is extremely similar, okay? Because Choice Hotels isn't an anomaly. They are all the same damn thing. So it's a franchise model. If you don't know what franchises are, it means they're individually owned by just some person, you know, in your community or an investor, whoever it is, and they pay royalties to the, the parent company, to the corporation. And in return, you know, they're using their computer systems. They're getting uh, exposure through advertising and they're a known name like Motel 6. The person could call their hotel State Street Inn and nobody would know what the hell that is, but everyone knows what Motel 6 is. So that's why you have franchises and that's why people want to be a part of a franchise because it's a known entity. But the thing is, Motel 6 has very little to no control over what individual properties do. So in the, the example of Choice Hotels, we would get one inspection a year. That means one day out of the entire year, there would be a representative of Choice Hotels that came to the property. And in the time I was there, there was one year where they skipped our review because they were just too busy and didn't have the people to do it. So in that case, it went two years without a Choice Hotel representative on site in the property. In addition to that, the only other time that they're going to come to the property is if there is going to be a bunch of complaints. If they get a ton of complaints about a certain property, then they're going to send the regional supervisor, whatever they give the title for that person, and they are going to sit down with the management and you know get their side of the story, see what's going on, and you know they may reprimand them. They have the ability to charge extra fees and such like that. But typically you're talking about one visit a year. So it's really hard to blame the parent company because they don't know what's going on there. It's not their business to know the day-to-day -day workings of their hotels. If they have over a thousand hotels, it's just not logistical for them to be seated at every hotel to make sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. Second off, 
Motel 6 said that they sent a directive out to all of their hotels to not comply with ICE agents at some point in this cycle of when this story, you know, is developing. And I know what that is too. On Choice Hotels, everyone had their own login information. When you log in for the day, you, it was a web-based service. You went to the home page, and it would give you any news, any notifications that you need to know about it. You know, news flash, most people don't read that shit, for one. So I would assume that the employees never saw this notification not to comply with ICE agents. Usually it's something about maybe promotions that the corporation is doing that they want you to know about sometimes it's an alert on a scam that is going on that they want front desk employees to know about but most of the time it never applied to you and you don't pay attention but the parent company did make that effort and outside of doing that maybe they contacted local hotels but at that point it's the individual hotels responsibility to forward that information down to the other employees but to go past the parent corporation and down to the individual hotels, in the articles it mentioned that ICE would purposely show up late at night or early in the morning. Now you could make the argument that that's when most of the people are checked in and present at the hotel, and that may be the reason they were doing it, but on a side note, what that also is, late night, early in the morning, there's not gonna be a manager on duty, and you're talking about some third shift worker who probably doesn't even know how to make reservations. I mean, it's the lowest rung. All they have to do is the night audit, which you're gonna hear my uh, defroster, and I can't help it because the window's fogging up. I can't see anything. It's probably all the hot air I'm spewing right now. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. But you're talking about a third string employee who doesn't know anything. That's not a manager on duty. And yes, there's a law, it's the Consumer Protection Act. So hotels are technically not supposed to give out private information on hotel guests. But it's not like you have some detective walking in, in like a suit or something, and politely asking you to print out a list of the people in the hotel. That's not how it works. I have been the person at that desk when the cops show up, okay? Have you ever seen someone pulled over for a speeding ticket? You get five fucking squad cars showing up. You think when they're looking to arrest somebody, it's just gonna be a single cop walking in the door? And I'm gonna use the word cop because the ICE agents essentially, same thing, whatever, easier to say. So, they come in, one, it's gonna be five or six of them. It's not one person, two, they're gonna be in bulletproof vests. It's gonna be very obvious. It's not like they're slender things that you don't notice. And three, they're all gonna have guns on them. Okay, even though you know that you're not the target, how many times in the news over the last couple of years have we heard of people getting shot by cops, right? Whether it was intended or not. In Chicago, the cops were, were uh, responding to a call and a neighbor opened their door to see what was going on and they got killed. I mean, that's how ridiculous this has gotten. There was an article uh, or a news story about six to eight months ago of a nurse. There was an unconscious patient at a hotel, or not a hotel, a hospital, and the cops came in wanting to get a DNA sample from that patient. So yes, this is much more intrusive than just giving out their name. But the cops came in wanting a DNA sample. She refused and she got arrested. Now later they said that that was wrong, she should have never got arrested, the cops were out of line, but that's what you're dealing with. And if you're a third shift employee, probably making minimum wage, is that the fight you're gonna pick in the middle of the night? You have all these cops rolling in, wanting a list of names in the hotel. If you just print out the damn thing and give it to them, just fine, whatever, get out of here. Whether they knew about the law or not, so many people are just gonna give in to that because you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to be the one picking a fight. You don't want to have any kind of consequences because you didn't comply with it. And why is the onus not on ICE to follow the law? You think they don't know about that law? Everyone's mad at Motel 6 when you should be mad at the fucking ICE agents. I don't, I don't get the, the vitriol for Motel 6 at all because I don't really know what else you expect them to do. You may get some... Uh, person at the desk at the registration desk or the check-in desk whatever you want to call it that is gonna stand their ground 
and say no to them, but that's few and far between. And you also, from my experience, don't want to be the hotel that doesn't comply with whatever the cops need because whether it's reality or just a perception, if they come in asking you for help on something and you're the hotel that tells them no, the next time something happens and you need something, they just might not show up as fast. So I can just put myself very easily in the situation of the person that is at that desk and I don't see how so many people are like, boycott Motel 6 and I'm never staying at a Motel 6. Look, if you don't want to stay at a Motel 6, that's fine. They have shitty rooms, okay? It's a cheap economy hotel. It's not a five-star place. If you're too good for it, you're too good for it. But this is a really stupid reason for boycotting Motel 6. Um, so yeah, I got, anyways, I had to get that off my chest because it was just something that's been driving me nuts the last two days when I first saw this. And I really think it's the state, uh, uh, what, what do they call themselves, attorney general or whatever, or state's attorney in Washington just trying to make a splash and trying to get attention because it doesn't even make sense. And then they're talking about the information that was given out and it was like uh, driver's license numbers and birth dates and he's suing on behalf of nine thousand people because he's not just worried about the quote latino sounding names he's suing on behalf of every name that was given out on this list and i don't think they actually have a copy of every list because i don't think there's any record of that what i'm assuming is they're saying nine thousand people stayed at these specific hotels in this span of time so whether their name was given out or not we're going to sue on behalf of everybody but how many times have you gone into a hotel and they asked you what your birthday was? They don't ask you when your birthday is. The only way that information is on that registration, which by the way, who cares if they know what your birthday is, but the only way that is on there is if you were a member of the rewards club and in some way they include that information on the printout because you're on the rewards program. And we never asked for license, uh, license, uh, IDs. We wouldn't take the number. We wouldn't photocopy it and it wouldn't be in that information. So all 9,000 of those weren't there either. Think every time you've checked into a hotel, how many times have they photocopied your ID or typed out your um, your ID, your license uh, number? They don't do that, your driver's license number. They don't do that. They might ask for your ID when you give them a credit card to pay with. Even that's not a given. So anyways, guys, uh, I think that's all I got on this thing. It is just, just awful. On a side note, I remember one time, this is completely unrelated, but I figure I'll tack it onto the end of this video since I'm ranting about some experiences and everything at the hotel. Um, I remember one time there was this guy that was staying for like a month and, um, he was, I mean, I don't think he was all there, but he was definitely an alcoholic. Every single time I saw him, he was stumbling drunk. And he was one of those guys where you know he's just talking crap and I'm not paying attention to him, but I couldn't tell you how many times he came down to the desk threatening to beat me up. Like, he's like, you know, I could throw you through that fucking window right now if I wanted to. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, Roger. His name was Roger. I won't tell you his last name, but his first name was Roger. And um, it, it was just one of those things you just, you. You learn to ignore him. He's just some drunk and he was staying there because he got kicked out of his place and he was on disability and apparently somehow that paid for, you know, a hotel every night for him. And one night he comes down and he's just bawling his eyes out and he's saying how he's going to hurt himself and he doesn't want to do this anymore and all this crap. And he's asking me to call the cops. But he's like, but I can't afford an ambulance because that's another fucking thing that pisses me off. Why do people get a bill when they haven't when they need an ambulance? If you pay taxes, that should be covered when you pay your taxes. But no, in a lot of municipalities, including where the hotel was, if you got to ride an ambulance, you also got a bill. That's a side note. So he's like, oh, I can't afford the ambulance ride. Um, can I? I want to go to the hospital. I need to go to the hospital, but um, I, I just need a cop to take me. It's like, okay, I mean, what do you want me to do? Not call the cops? So in that situation where a guy's basically telling me he's gonna kill himself, what liabilities do I have if I say, no, I'm not calling the cops for you. You deal with it, you're on your, you deal with it yourself. I mean, come on. 
So I call, and I didn't call 911, I just called the local police station, and the lady on the phone is such a bitch to me. I'm like, I just need someone to come here. I don't care what you do, I don't care where it goes from there, but this guy's telling me he's gonna kill himself, I just need somebody here to handle this. And she's like, well, we're not a taxi service, we're not gonna take him to the hospital. I don't care if you actually take him to the hospital or not. Does not matter to me. I'm just saying I don't want to deal with this and I don't want the responsibility if this guy hurts himself or someone else. It's a hotel full of people. Oh my God. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I'm turning this off. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. If you want to give the video a like, give it a dislike. Um, but I really think that you are um, not paying attention and not really looking into what happened if you're just one of these people on Twitter or something saying, boycott Motel 6. You know, even if you're, I don't care what side it is, if you're for the ICE agents doing this or against it, either way, I think the onus is on them. It's their responsibility to follow the law because they're the ones that are supposedly enforcing it. So why, why do they not have this responsibility? I don't understand why all the hate went to Motel 6's direction. It just doesn't make sense to me. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I will see you next time.